Hey, remember the Doctor Who Centenary special? Because I don't. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where today I want to talk a little bit about Doctor Who marketing, specifically in relation to the Doctor Who Centenary, and I guess tangentially, the hype around the 60th anniversary. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, I'd be ever so grateful. We are trying to get to 15,000 subscribers as quickly as possible, so your help would be ever so much appreciated. Also, go follow me on Twitter if you don't already, as I post my regular Doctor Who opinions over there. But with that said, let's get into the video. So what this video is not going to be, it's not going to be me talking about the subjective quality of the current era of Doctor Who. I've done numerous videos on that topic. That's not what we're talking about today. What I want to talk about today is specifically how this era has been marketed and my fears for the centenary special going forward. Now this conversation was spurred on by a tweet I put out on Twitter saying that the way I've seen more hype for Beep the Meep than I have for the Doctor Who Centenary special. And I've had a few responses to that basically giving a myriad of reasons as to why that's the case. With the most common one essentially being that, you know, it's a meme, it'll die out in a few days. And you know what? Yeah, that's very possibly the case. But I do find it kind of funny that I've seen more hype surrounding a meme based on a 70s Doctor Who comic character who's supposedly returning in the 60th, than I have for anything centenary special related. And I think this opens up a wider conversation about this era's approach to marketing and why I don't really feel it works. So a common argument I see, you know, as to why we haven't seen anything about the centenary special yet is that it's too early. You know, people saying, oh, it's too early for them to promote stuff for the centenary special. That's why no one's hyped for it. Okay, but then I raise you, Twice Upon a Time. Twice Upon Time's first trailer came on July 23rd, 2017, during, I believe, one of the Comic Cons, when it was a Christmas special, meaning that, therefore, there is less of a gap between now and the centenary than there was between the Twice Upon a Time trailer dropping and the release of that episode. So, personally, I don't feel it's too early. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I didn't like that approach, I felt it was too early. You know what? Fair enough. But personally for me, I would rather a Doctor's final episode actually, you know, be promoted, even if it is a bit too early, than waiting till like a month before the thing releases, which is what I feel like they're going to do because it's what they do every single time. And this is another thing when you're talking about the Chibnall era online. A lot of people say, well, how do you know this is going to happen? How do you know the marketing is going to start until a month before? How do you know the centenary is going to be a bit of a mess? And like, while I don't know for definite, you can base things off previous precedent. And I think that the centenary is going to maintain the precedent of not really releasing anything until a month before the thing comes out. And when they do release things before, it's going to be very lackluster. Look at Series 13, for instance. The end of Revolution of the Daleks, we got the teaser that Dan was going to be joining the TARDIS for Series 13. Then there was pretty much radio silence until July, when at a Comic-Con they had a panel discussing Flux, revealing a new character played by Jacob Anderson, and a very, very vague interview with the cast, because this era is all about secrecy when it comes to its marketing approach. Then, like two days after that, they announced Chibnall and Jodie were leaving. And then after that, they announced Russell was coming back. And then it was almost like pretty much again radio silence in terms of Series 13 until about a month before when they dropped the Series 13 trailer. And then you look at Series 12. Something that was marketed so poorly there were genuinely people who thought Spyfall Part 1 was a new special rather than the beginning of a full new series. So I'm basing my assertions on what we've seen happen before. And what we've seen happen before is they basically leave everything secret till the last minute and then by the time the episode comes out everyone just kind of goes, yeah, okay and then they move on. You don't get that hype, that traction, that thing that social media is designed to do, promote your stuff. And I understand, you know, a lot of people like the secrecy approach and that's fine. I just think it's been taken to its extreme with this era. You look at Series 13 marketing, Mr. Tardis did a great video on it. There were companies at the time of Series 13's broadcast who didn't know when it was releasing and they were waiting on the BBC to tell them so they could ship merchandise. Whatever way you look at it, that's just bad business. And I feel unfortunately like the centenary is going to fall victim to this. And bear in mind as well, the centenary isn't a normal episode of Doctor Who. Not only is it the ending of an entire era of the show, including a Doctor and a showrunner, it's also featuring the return of multiple classic characters that are beloved by fans, and is a landmark broadcast for the BBC as it's to be involved in the BBC's 100th year centenary celebrations. So surely, with all that, you'd think it would be getting the push of the century to make sure everyone's eyes are on it. 
especially because, as stated previously, we have 60th stuff dropping. Now, that's another argument I've seen as to why people aren't hyped for the centenary. Oh, obviously people are going to be more hyped for the 60th, there's recency bias, and, you know, David Tennant and Catherine Tate coming back, and all this. And yeah, that's true, you know, obviously David Tennant and Catherine Tate coming back is going to be a massive deal for people. But surely that would make you want to go even harder on centenary special marketing as a result. Surely you'd want to make sure people knew that this episode was coming out so that people didn't forget about it amidst the buzz around the 60th. Companies don't tend to see one of their other products going out and look at another product and go, well, that's another product coming out, guess we've got to give up on this one. No, you, you, you can promote both. And what gets me too is that there are people who will blame the 60th and Russell for promoting their show, basically doing their job, and saying, oh, this is taking away focus from the centenary special. It's like, no, the centenary special people, the Chibnally remarketing people, are not helping themselves because they're not promoting stuff alongside it. And look, I understand it is still early. There is still time. I'm not going to say that there's no time at all for them to do it. But I just have a feeling we're heading towards the exact same sequence of events that we've had for the last five years. And I think just seeing the buzz around the Russell era, seeing the marketing approach, getting social media involved. Admittedly, they did try and do that with Find the Doctor, but there was no incentive behind it. The reason the social media posts for the Russell era work is because they have a good payoff. You know, the two hearts plus thingy, they reveal cool stuff like a new Doctor, returning characters, a new character. Cool stuff. What did we get at the end of Find the Doctor? A JPEG of Jodie Whittaker that looks pretty much the same as all the other JPEGs of Jodie Whittaker that exist. And that's why I'm so frustrated when you look at the way this era markets, because we've seen it done better already. And they're not even fully in control yet. They've admitted themselves the only reason they've dropped the things they've dropped is because they're filming in public, something we've seen. Which is why, in contrast, the marketing for the current era just feels so lackluster because these guys have just started and already it feels like the show's more talked about and hyped than it has been in years and i know what some of you are going to say you're going to say Thary's, oh why do you even care you don't even like this era that much to begin with and you know what yeah that's true i'm not a big fan of this era but i still want doctor who to do well regardless of what iteration it's in because i love this show and just to see it mismanaged for this long is frustrating and i do feel sorry for current era fans despite the fact that whenever i talk about this they seem really defensive it's like i'm on your side but these are all just my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you later. Shout out to Debs Iona, Shane Smith, Ree Caffin, Seb Lowndes, Jay Monroe, Hash Andy Coot, Patrick Mewson, Simon Ashley, Steve Safaro, Andrew Townsend, Alex Robbins, Michael Dykes, Paul Bryden, Sam Yates, Michael Rhodes, Jerry the Meerkat. Heretic, Cameron Jefferson, John M, Andrew Evanson, Lucy, Josh Keck, JM97, Captain Obvious, Gallifrey and Rob, Cliff's Random Silliness, Kyle McCroy, Nova Wolf Gaming, Carol Jude. If you want to become a member, feel free to do so. It really helps out. You get exclusive posts, shout outs in every video, and even your own badge and custom emojis to use.